Hello, Michael. Hello, how are you doing? Fine. I'm happy that you are here in Basel and we would like to ask you a few questions. So, first of all, what is it all about? What is your main message you want to pass on with your work? Love. Basically, love and education and healing. Uh, people tend to be very, I don't know, I guess you could say unhappy sometimes with things that go on in their lives. And uh, uh, when someone's happy and, and they're feeling loved and, and things are flowing really nice, they, they, they seem to be, uh, there's an energy that just comes out of them that's, that's so vibrant. And my, my message is basically to create that kind of connection with people and introduce them to the ascended beings, these higher spirits to uh, help us with that. How did you come in contact first with these ascended beings? Well, I really didn't have a choice. <laughs> I was born uh, into it in Seattle, Washington. Uh, I was born on a Tuesday and that following Sunday I was sitting in my first seance. And so uh, there was like a small little prophecy about my abilities and what I would be doing. And at a very young age, I received training uh, from a well-known medium. And so uh, I just, you know, when you're that young, you think it's normal and natural and, and this is what's going to happen. And it did. <laughs> what was the training about? How do you train a four-year-old boy in spiritual matters? Well, the interesting thing is, is no matter how old you are, there is a higher consciousness within you, okay, that's ageless. So the medium, with the help of Saint Germain, was able to connect to the higher self of that, of this little child, myself, at four years old, so there could be a communication between the higher self and the four-year-old consciousness. Um, and it was, you know, as, as simple as that. And you once uh, told me that uh, when you were older you have been trained by the masters themselves. Yes, when I went, at the age of seven I went through a 20 year, 21 year period of time where I just experienced life, uh, the unknown, because it wasn't really what was connected to what I was told. And when I finally, at the age of 28, went to California, uh, I was going through my own healing process. And in doing so, all this stuff started opening up. Seeing uh, spirits everywhere and communicating and things of that nature. Um, the gentleman that I was working with at the, at the time said he could train me with my mediumship. Well, He was over his head and, and really didn't know what he was doing. So the masters themselves came in on a spirit level to train me while I was in the cabinet. It took about eight months and I finally had the trumpet come out of the cabinet and did tappings. And one tap was yes, two taps was no, three trap, taps were like maybe or, or they don't know. Um, And that went on for about four months, and then Bobby spoke for the first time, Lady Nada, out of the trumpet. And, um, and then, and I went into trance, so I don't know uh, what that was. And that was the hardest thing to learn, actually, was going out of my body into trance. And then about a year after that, I started apporting. But it was all in the dark. I wasn't doing lighted apportations then. So first, the airports, they happened in the dark. That's quite an unusual and very special gift, these airports. Can you say a few words about what do they mean? Why are they brought here? Why are they given to us as a gift? Well, honestly, the, the, the one reason is, is to basically get the people's attention because they like phenomena something unexplained, something unusual. And so they're used kind of like that to get people's attention. Hey, come on, let's, let's you know, check this out, right? Um, the second reason 
is the, uh, the, the message that comes with them, uh, a special message from spirit to the individual that's, that's being handed the, this object, uh, which seems to be very special to the sinners. They seem to like that more than me just giving one message for all of them. Mm -hmm. They like to have their own little individual message. And, and that's healing for those people. So, and healing is where it's at. The third reason is these, these objects are in, uh, endowed with programming of energy um, and, and knowledge to help with sometimes mental, physical, uh, emotional, or um, uh, spirit healing, okay, on those levels. Uh, for instance, just to, just to give you a little bit of, of an example, uh, there was two ladies that both had uh, stage four cancer and Jesus materialized in one of my events and handed the one lady a ruby about, oh, I'd say it was about 180 carats. And she wore it here and within a matter of, of a couple, two, three weeks, the cancer went away. Now, I'm not claiming, neither will the masters claim it was because of the object, but definitely it, play, it paid a, uh, played a part. Same thing with the, the second lady. Uh, and hers healed in two days. Um, and it was two different kinds of cancer. Now, I'm, I mean, we want, the masters would want me to be careful in regards to claiming that it's the object. I think that the people, they feel so connected and so in awe and, and, and special about the object that they allow themselves to heal themselves. Because they now they start to believe in things, believe in themselves, that, that they're children of God and therefore have the power to heal themselves. And that's what these objects activate in people. Yeah, that's really a great gift. It seems that you are communicating with these masters just every day, especially with Lady Nada. How, what kind of communication is that? You hear them or you just know well, that they are there and what they want to let you know? Well, I know when they're there usually, unless they block me from knowing they're there. Um, you would think that you would hear the language in your head. And sometimes it even seems that way. But it's, it's not really a language, it's, a, it's, a, it's an energy vibration and it's a knowing of what it is they're telling you. And the more and more uh, comfortable and used to it that you, that you, ha that you have with it, uh, the more and more it starts sounding like a, a language. But that's the hard part is taking what they're saying to you, translating it in your mind and your heart, and then repeating it to you. So it's, it's, it's not exactly the same message, but it's, it, it's hopefully close. You know, it's like me telling you a story, you tell someone, they tell someone, then it comes back to me, it's not the same story. Similar to that, um, but it's close, you know, like for instance, just to give you an, an example, if uh, Lady Nada was to tell me that, uh, yes, this is the person for you to be with, you know, that person asks that question. Well, there's a lot more to it than that. That's how I would say it. When they're saying it to me, it's, it's more involved and more detailed because they, they say, yes, this is the person that you, that, that you, that you could be with or should be with, however you need to focus on this energy, that energy, to tie the two together um, in, a, in a relationship situation. Uh, it's really hard to bring the whole total package through because you got to sift it through yourself. And if you're in an emotional quandary that day, the emotions interfere with the message. If you're in a bad mood, your, your bad mood interferes with the message. Um, it's best to come in and do it when you're clean, you're in a good, happy mood, you're, you're not hungry, you're not thirsty, um, and so forth. And it's also affected by the people that are receiving the message. 
Okay, if they come in feeling in a bad mood or they're not feeling well or whatever, it affects the message. Um, here in your center, when I did these events, um, I feel from what I received from responses, they went really well. Well, the reason is, is because the people that were here were all excited. They all felt good. They were all positive. You know, there wasn't any negativity. So that helped the events to be a lot better. But sometimes events are just kind of, you know, boring and, and they end very fast and stuff. That's because the, there's some people in the room that are not all that oh, yes. in a good mood. Um, uh, I mean, I've had people come to get readings from me that were, that were uh, intoxicated. I can't do a reading with someone that's intoxicated or on uh, drugs or pain pills or something like that because it interferes with the, with, with the, um, the vibration of the energy and the intent. So they communicate to me in an energy form. Yes. Okay, that's interesting. You have certain rules you have to follow for in your life in order to do the work you're doing? Um, yeah, some of them are rules. Others seem like a like a like a, a reward. In other words, I got to eat protein and sugars, which is one of the reasons why I have some weight on me. Um, I don't need to have this much weight on me, but I've been working on that. Uh, but when you're eating proteins and sugars, that's what creates the the, the ectoplasm for me to to bring through the phenomena. You know, without it, it, it doesn't happen. You have to have, it's like people say, well, how do you bring something from nothing into nothing? Some, nothing into something, right? Well, well, it isn't nothing into something. It's ectoplasm into the object that opens up the vibration to its, to, from its natural form to this physical form. Okay? Uh, where are these objects, these stones coming from? Are they really materialized or are they apported, taken from some place and brought here? Or are they duplicated from an original or you have an idea how they are generated? Well, it's interesting that you asked the question about duplication and I'll get to that in a minute because I've never really said this before. But what basically happens, the masters, spirits, Even spirits that are like, maybe like when we pass away, we, we see energy, okay? Well, let's say Saint Germain sees an energy of a 200 carat sapphire that, it does, that doesn't belong to somebody, that someone lost, um, then they would go and they would take the object and bring it back to Shambhala, study it, charge it with certain energies, and then they would put it in their in their energy room where they have all these different minerals all over the place, right? Well, when, when um, I'm going to do an apportation, Saint Germain, who's in charge of this because he's the head alchemist in the, in the hierarchy, he looks at the vibration of the people in the room. That's why it takes a little bit of time to get started. And he calculates that mathematically energy-based on which objects to take and which one they're going to receive and from who and what's charged in it. I mean, it's a long process. Now, time and space doesn't exist the way we understand it. Um, truthfully, it's instantaneous for them, but for us, it's got some time to it, right? So, they, so Saint Germain has this beautiful uh, Asian a rosewood table that, that he puts these objects on. It's a table that has a little bit of a uh, kind of a, a curve in the middle and he puts them in there after they've been charged and, and activated. And he then opens up his heart chakra. It opens up because he's in spirit. They don't show themselves to one another in a physical form. That's an illusion anyway, okay? Yes. And, and the heart chakra or body opens 
and a silver fluidy energy comes out onto the physical objects, allowing them to go into their natural form, which is energy and motion. Everything is an energy and motion, including you and I. And then once the, the objects start to turn into the energy, they're lifted, and then a vortex of sorts. What's happening is that it's a quantum field that folds space and time, taking the point, a point of destination and the point of origin and moving them together in the same space, which in, in my case, in my eyes, my forehead, my, my mouth, my throat, my heart, my solar plexus and kundalini, okay? And I like to do it inside the mouth because the physical aspect of it isn't as intense as it is if it was to come out of here, okay? And so it enters and arrives at the same moment. It turns into a fluid, or no, um, a, a gassy substance and then into a fluid and then as it hits the light it solidifies. Okay? And, and that's basically the, the process. And these objects are physical objects that they find throughout the world or in other uh, planetary structures or interdimensional areas. Um, sometimes, uh, depending on uh, the purpose or, or um, reasons that we, I personally couldn't even, uh, I don't know about, um, they will take an object, make the object move really fast, creating a, a magnetic field, causing a duplication of the object. Okay? okay? And then so they keep the original object and send the duplication through. They, they do that too. Um, and sometimes in, in regards to gemstones, um, they will bring through... Uh, pure, fresh out of the dirt gemstones. They'll bring gemstones that are fresh out of the ground but are enhanced to, to make them look more beautiful um, by either doing a heating process or whatever. Every once in a while they'll bring through lab-created objects uh, because they hold certain different energies. Um, the diamonds, for instance, with, with, with cubic zirconia and diamonds, the diamonds can hold a certain amount of energy and vibration that the, the, um, the, 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 the cubic zirconias can't hold, or the other way around. So they do that. Uh, what they don't break through are synthetics. Synthetics are... Um, there's, there's a negative polarity to synthetics, and it's not able to... Um, to hold the vibration or the energy, so they don't use that. Uh, sometimes they'll bring through gold, silver, um, platinum, copper, uh, uh, um, uh, with rings, you know. Sometimes they will bring a plated ring that's plated with silver or gold with copper underneath, or sometimes they'll bring a plated gold object with silver underneath um, with the stone on it. And sometimes, like for instance, in, in, in Hawaii, I apported with the help of St. Germain a old antique um, 18 karat gold ring that was a dragon, and around its claws held a opal, which was rare, and the lady the next morning after receiving it goes to the, to the jewelry store and had it appraised at $3,600. That event, I only charged $25 for. They, <laughs> they came in, she comes into that event and gets a $3,600 gold <laughs> ring, right? Yeah, cool. And not to mention all the other things that I have given. Uh, Saint Germain likes to give out silver coins because dollars, silver dollars, sometimes completely untouched, they'll come through still encased in the plastic, you see? Yeah. And when that happens, don't touch it because that means it's worth more not being touched, right? So he, he does that. And because they don't, they don't look at the things that they give us on a monetary level. They, they look at it as an education and a healing level. 
you see. So yeah. they could give you a $3,600 ring even though you only paid twenty, forty, a hundred dollars to come in to see it, right? Because they don't, they don't go there. Now me, I probably wouldn't go to a jewelry store, buy a thirty-six hundred dollar ring, have someone give me a hundred dollars and then give it to them. That wouldn't, that wouldn't make any sense. Okay. But with the masters, they're beyond the monetary vibration. Okay. Can you say a few words about Shambhala? How do you know? what it looks like there? Have you been brought there on an etheric or astral level or have you been told how it looks there? Um, I've been there astrally and, I, and I've been invited physically but uh, you got to go up those big old Himalayan mountains and I may, I may need a couple of mules to take me. <laughs> you know? um, but uh, one day I might want to try to go out there. I just, you know, got, got a little, got to have the time to do it, right? But Shambhala looks kind of like a uh, a Greek structure. You come to a a um, a path that you start walking up, okay? Then there's this dome building that's got pillars looks like a gazebo and there's this golden light that comes up out of it. I actually have a picture of it as one of my logos. And you have to walk through the golden light and if you pass through, you're clear to keep going. But if you can't get through the light, it'll, it'll bring you back to where you started, you know, on the outside of the, of the, of the, uh, of the structure. You can't get through. It's really weird. Now that's on a physical level. And then you go upstairs. Now you get these, these stone stairs. They're not cut stones. They're just stones that are put in the side of the mountain that you can walk up. And then you, then you get up a little further and then you come to marble steps made out of white and black marble that obviously have been cut by human hands. And you walk up and then there's this hall, this huge a uh, domed hall that you walk down and there's this, this big domed door that opens like this uh, made out of some sort of wood and there's mountains all around but it's almost tropical looking even though you're in the Himalayan mountains. You go inside, the very first room is, is called the sacred oil room. This is a, a bath probably about the size of this room of uh, different sorts of oils from all over the cosmos and earth that you go in and you bathe in it and it's healing. It, it gives you longevity and uh, makes you be younger, not just look younger, be younger. And which is one of the keys how it makes the physical embodied masters stay young. And then there's another room where it's a great hall where they have their debates and their discussions. There's another um, place that's sacred and, and it's for meditation and they have all kinds of minerals and stuff all over the place and it's got an opening in, in the ceiling for the sun and the moonlight to come in and they have a big 500,000 pound um, quartz crystal in the middle of the room and the light comes down and it goes out and beams into the other crystals that are around the room. It's, a, it's an amazing experience. And there's other different places and there's no bedrooms <laughs> they don't sleep, you know. And then there's this door that leads outside and you go up a little pathway and at the top is one of the most beautiful gardens you'd ever want to see. And that's where I like to go. And I go there, I sit there, and I talk to whoever comes to talk to me and it's very healing for me. Um, and it's the same way uh, on, a, on a physical and astral level. That's how it seems. So it's really not only uh, exists on an astral plane, but really on a physical level, Shambhala exists in the Himalayas. Yes. Um, every five or seven years, there's a pilgrimage to go to the gates. Um, some people will uh, go on, walk on their hands and knees for hundreds of miles to show their... Uh, their, you know, right to come in, you know, to show, hey, I, I did this, I worshipped 
You know, and the masters are not looking for people to torture themselves to be able to go in. They're looking for what's in here. You okay. See? And uh, it's it's what you would call a physical um, interdimensional structure. It appears and disappears. It appears and it disappears, but always in the same spot. Okay. Interesting. So a final question, what is your personal vision for the future, for your personal future and for the future of mankind or to the future of the planet? Well, the way I would like to put my future in place is I would love to be able to create um, seven temples in different parts of the world where the Ascended Masters can come physically um, to communicate and teach and educate us. I also would like to create a school that I've already called Rubies the Rainbows um, Indigo School for Children. And this is a school where regular children can be educated to who their master teachers are, their spirit guides, help them open up to their gift and their metaphysical uh, connection, help them understand the nature of God and and so forth through the teachings of the masters, teach them how to grow their own vegetables and fruits and raise uh, animals and uh, all the way from, from the ground to commerce, to selling them um, for a bartering system, not for a, a dollar amount. And, and then they would also have the regular curriculum. They would learn how to read and write, math, English, other languages that they choose, um, and, and, and all kinds of different things, history, you know, um, and I would like to be able to create that. Of course, that takes funding. As far as I, I notice on the, on the attentions, ultimately, for the future right now is we are now moved into the feminine age which has nothing to do with gender. And that feminine age is where the integration of the duality begins to start, where male and female no longer exist, where bad and good no longer exists, where love and hate no longer exists. It comes together as a wholeness, which is beyond the comprehension of our conscious physical minds, but it's perfectly nirvana God uh, outcome, okay? That's what we're working on. As far as the planet is concerned, this is just an illusion that the elementals loaned us this, 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 this vibration so we can experience the duality. Ultimately, man and womankind will be light body beings similar to the angelic realm that will eventually go off into our own um, universe and create our own vibrations and, 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 and uh, elements um, and it's and it's vast and beyond the the normal ability to even describe what that possibly even could be okay you know but ultimately where I am concerned I just feel that we all are brothers and sisters that we should all be be within each other's hearts and treat each other with the respect that they deserve and um, and we're not judging whether they deserve or not. It's just we're all living in that vibration where yes, you, te you, you treat your neighbor and, and your family and everybody with, with love. And therefore when the love is strong and at its highest levels, there's no more disease, there's no more lo uh, war, there's no more um, starvation, you know, nothing, it's, it's just, Everything is, is absolutely nirvana, perfect energies. Thank you very much for sharing this information with us. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome anytime. Thank you. Namaste.